Okay, I think we're I think we're going here. Okay. Hi everybody. So excited to have you joining us for the 2024 Mini Comic Awards. Woo! Uh if you're if you're clapping at home, uh make sure that it, this is the Mini Comic Awards, so make sure that it's not too loud, but it's not too quiet so we know it's still it's still applause, you know? Um it just has to be mini applause. Uh <laughs> So excited to have everyone here. Uh, my name is Joan Zahadark. I am uh, part of the steering committee for the Cartoonist Cooperative and uh, so excited to uh, be your master of ceremonies for this evening. Uh, this, the Mini Comic Awards, is our amazing showcase, an annual virtual showcase founded by uh, cartoonist Leslie Hung and Sloan Leong that spotlights the unique, challenging, and underrecognized work in the short form medium. Um, you know, mini comics, it's this form where folks are just starting to get their storytelling skills or getting to experiment, really push those boundaries. We get so many different kinds of art out there for folks to experience and so many different genres and perspectives. So uh, really exciting to have this out there as a way to just showcase as much as we can and spotlight those mini comics that don't get nearly as much love. Uh, yes, so much mini applause. So, so glad to see it. Um, uh, we have, I believe, uh, we're gonna get into it in a little bit here. Uh, just a short video from uh, Sloane Leong uh, herself for uh, just introing the show as we're getting started here. We want to get that queued up. Give it a second for... Super Hi everyone, thanks for coming to the Mini Comic Awards tonight. Super happy to have you. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Sun Leong. I'm one of the co-founders of the Cartoonist Cooperative. Also a cartoonist, editor, writer, artist, etc. Um, my friend and I, Leslie Hung, started this uh, Mini Comic Awards ceremony initiative two years ago now. Um, and we're really happy that we get to fold it into the cooperative as an ongoing program. Um, that way it gets more support from more people and it's not just us two running everything because it's very hard. Um, I want to shout out our judges for this year. That's Taylor Robin, Sun M, and Victoria Ying. Um, they did the very hard work of reading all your beautiful mini comics, um, which ended up tallying up to like 338 entries, which is a lot of comics to read in a month. So thank you for your hard work, judges. Um, I also want to thank Iris J, Nero Villagayas O'Reilly, and Joan Zara Dark for running the show tonight, making the cool overlays, and yeah, it looks so much better than when I did it. I'm like so happy. <laughs> um, and then of course, I want to thank our donors. If you look on our donor page, or we'll feature them later in the show, um, there's about 28 donors, and they're basically all cartoonists or small presses in comics. Um, so I just wanted to shout them out. I really uh, appreciate everyone's um, donations to the prize pool. I think it's amazing that we can give to each other in this way. Um, and I'm just like really thankful and humbled and uh, appreciative of your generosity. So thank you so much, much appreciated. Um, you know, early congratulations to all the nominees and whoever the winners are. I'm so excited to get to hear what the judges thought about your wonderful comics. And yeah, thank you so much and excited for the ceremony. Have a good one. Uh, 
Ah, bless. Love to love to see it. Uh, thank you so much, Sloane, for that uh, super super heartfelt uh, little intro there. We really appreciate it. Um, and uh, like Sloan said, you can see all of the amazing donors that we had for this show uh, scrolling along here. Uh, we have some really awesome folks. Uh, big shout outs to uh, Piao Studio, uh, Belfield Hunt Press, uh, Blick Art Materials, uh, among so many other folks for uh, contributing to the amazing prize pool that we have for this show. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I am not going to waste too much more of your time uh, and get into introducing uh, our first speaker for our first category here. Uh, we have uh, our our first judge that is reading, uh, presenting for autobiography. Uh, we have the author of the webcomic Never Satisfied and upcoming horror graphic novel Hunger's Bite out in 2025. It's Taylor Robin. Hello, Yay. that's me. Uh, so I will be reading uh, for autobiography, as John just told us. Um, let's see. So our nominees for autobiography and nonfiction are Sunflowers by Kesey Young, Fancies by Alex Cara, I Owe It to My Parents to Not Come Out by Richard Mercado, and if the body keeps the score, does that mean I'm winning? By Aransa Pena Popo. And the winner is. Fancies by Alex Tuck. Um, So I loved Fancies like more than anything. It was just the perfect encapsulation of what it is to be a child and to have your imagination influenced by everything around you. Uh, it's just this ad adorable comic. Uh, the style and the, like the way that this artist draws children is I think the best I've ever seen. Just very simplified, but just gets to the heart of what makes being a kid with an imagination, like what makes it so good? Um, yeah, if any of my other judges would like to say anything i don't know if we're supposed to but i love this one so much yeah i definitely voted for this one for the winner as well because the artistry on display the craft it was unique but at the same time really beautiful so um yeah it was my my favorite of the bunch but there was a lot of really really strong uh, autobiographical comics this year um, but Fancies was just speaking to that experience of being a child in a way um, that is pretty rare for adults to be able to tap back into. So I thought that was really, really cool. All right. Thank you so much. Congrats again to uh, Alex Cara uh, for uh, for autobiography. So amazing to see. Uh, truly, just a be beautiful art form. Again, all of all of the nominees here are are winners tonight. And just to just to celebrate everyone here, uh, just huge huge shout outs to all of our nominees tonight you're all just making amazing work out there that we love to see uh we're gonna go right into our uh our next speaker here uh our next judge uh is a horror and court jester who is also an author for thief of the heights uh coming from harper collins in 2024 and something crawled out from from vault She's written for comics, games, and film. It's Sun M. Howdy, y'all. It's very excited to be here and get to talk about science fiction, which, don't tell anyone I said this, is the best genre in all of comics and everything in the world. Um, I'm so excited to talk about the nominees for this award. 
First up, we have You've Been Conquered by the Human Race by Leo Healy, Torgo Wells, and Claire Napier. Uh, we have Golden Record 4.0 by Stephanie. And we have Marrow, aka Rodney's Law by Sloan Hong. And lastly, but not least, The Space Between Nothing by Santa Camilla. Uh, I am so excited to wait in anticipation with you before I can say the winner. Marrow, aka Rodney's Law by Sloan Hung. I fell in love with this comic immediately. The immaculate world building, the amazing detail with character expression, the way that I was gripped for every page, the anticipation that Sloan can have per page to make you turn to the next. I, I was in love. And uh, as someone who is a big fan of sci-fi, I think world building is half the battle and the world building in this comic is exceptional. Uh, it was so good. I had to I had to go buy it actually to read it so I could have it. Um, it's amazing. Yeah. I don't know if anyone of the judges wants to jump in, but I think everyone unanimously quite liked it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I totally agree with everything San said. I had actually bought it during the short box fest, but I had like such a giant stack of comics to read that I didn't quite get to it and I'm so glad that this opportunity presented itself and that it forced me to sit down and read this really beautiful comic. Mm -hmm. I had also bought it during the short box thing and I was so glad to see that it had been entered because I was like, yes, this is, this is a winner right here. Bless. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Son. And once again, all our judges, uh, congrats again to Sloan Hong for, uh, for winning with Mero. Just truly a wonderful, bizarre work. We love to see it. Um, everyone's work is bizarre in the best way. Uh, and we, and we're so happy to have it. Uh, we have, uh, one more, uh, well, not just one more, but uh, our next one coming up here, uh, I'm excited to introduce uh, a author and illustrator of graphic novels, the illustrator for DC's Diana Princess of the Amazons. Her authored middle grade series, City of Secrets, was released in 2020, and her YA debut, Hungry Ghost, was released in 2024. She is currently writing and illustrating two unannounced graphic novel projects. Give it up for Victoria Ying. Hi guys. I have the privilege of being able to present the award for romance. I got into comics because of manga and I really fell in love with romance and books that were geared towards talking about relationships. Uh, even now, most of my books still deal with relationships as their primary topic of conversation. And so romance is just a genre that has been close to my heart for a very long time. Um, so without further ado, the nominees for romance are Cross Signals by Naren Stritch. Acquired Taste by Brett Lee, Parasocial Activity by Pearl Law, Ethernet Cable Girlfriend by Cam Marshall. And the winner is... Oops. Cross Signals by Naren Stritch. Um, I don't know if they're here today, but if not, I just wanted to say that this book was so beautifully illustrated. The limited color palette was fed into the story as well as being beautiful, which is not something you always see. And the skill and craft of this piece was just something that could not be ignored. Uh, if any of my fellow judges would also like to say something, I will turn it over.
No, of course. Uh, okay. um, yeah, I have to agree. This one was just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's, I think when we were judging, I was saying like, this is exactly what you would want from a winner. Great writing, great art, just it's got it all. Uh, beautiful layouts, just thumbs up all around. Yeah, I'm a sucker for romance having the romanticism, and it's it's something that I've chased since like the shonen <laughs> twelve year old me, and so to get to experience it in something that is like very holistically unique and has like all of this romantic detailing, including like what Victoria said with the color palette, I yeah I was fully obsessed with it. It's a wonderful wonderful comic. Lovely. Uh, that is, uh, once again, uh, congratulations to Nurenstrich for Cross Signals. Uh, truly, uh, uh, like the judges all said, uh, the uh, element of romanticism is, I think, a really amazing thing to see. Uh, we're uh, <laughs> uh, really excited for all of our uh, nominees here. I think there's a uh, such a wide variety from uh, works that are collected in anthologies, works that are uh, collected in the short box comics fair, uh, works that are like their own standalone releases. Um, so, so excited to see such a wide breadth of uh, stories collected uh, for our awards here. Um, super, super appreciate it. Um, as a reminder, you can see all of the amazing folks who donated to uh, make this show possible uh, over at the bottom of the screen there. So uh, thank you so much again to all of our amazing donors uh, for putting together our prize pool here. Um, we are uh, cruising through our show here today. Um, so I think uh, we can uh, get moving into our next category, um, which I believe we have uh, another uh, queued up video for uh, when our tech is ready to, uh, to get that set up. to bring you our horror. Hello again. I'm really excited to bring you our horror nominees. Uh, first up, we have I Only Have Eyes For You, Dear by Kizi Young. We have Zugzwang by Barrett Stanley. Uh, we have Circadian by S.J. Miller. And we have Bottoms Up by Barbara Benyus. And our winner is Bottoms Up by Barbara Benyes. Yay! Congrats, Barbara. So, so excited for this one. Um, uh, horror is is such a fun category uh, just for the uh, different different opportunities it presents and like the catharsis that we have. So uh, truly so excited. Once again, uh, Barbara Benyes, a uh, another another short box comics fair uh, debut that we're excited to have here. Uh, along with folks that are putting their own work out on itch um, and other platforms. So just so excited to have this huge breadth of, of work that we have in front of us. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna take a second just to like 
break up the show a little bit because we have a really breakneck pace here. Um, we could to... take a moment to talk about Bottoms Up. We sure can. I don't want to skip that by accident. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love that one because, well, I mean, not just because, but I liked how it played with the blogger format in the beginning and then just slowly unravels into, like, it really plays with the format of a comic in a way that you don't see very often. And you always got to pay attention to people doing that because people who break comics love comics the most. And I like that in this one. Give it a second if the rest of the judges want to also hop on and say something. Uh, yeah, definitely. Horror was a very competitive category. Again, I love the breadth of the mini comics that we got to read. So many different genres, so much really innovative work in that space. And Bottoms Up was just such a fun and different kind of take on horror and that's why we really uh gravitated towards it and chose that as our winner i am not as eloquent as everyone else is so i just want to say i really agreed when it was brought up as being the winner there wasn't um you know much fighting i think at all and i think that bottoms up is such a refreshing take just like victoria said for this genre and that's pretty amazing to have it refreshing takes in horror it's a it's a pretty long-standing genre of terrible things so i quite enjoyed it well said well said um as a remi as a reminder for everybody uh at least for all of the comics here that have uh, uh, links available for where for where you can buy them right now, um, they are set up at uh, the uh, Mini Comic Awards page currently, uh, both for our winners and our nominees. Uh, so uh, you can head over to cartoonist.coop slash the uh, the Mini Comic Awards, and uh, uh, at least for anything that's available there uh uh get all those get all those beautiful comics so we super appreciate it um yeah uh, i also want to take a quick second just as we're uh we're fl we're flying through here so we uh i wanted to just talk a little bit about uh you know our our show here today is part of the cartoonist cooperative uh, which for anyone who may not know, in case you're uh, checking out the uh, the light, the stream of this after the fact, in case you're catching the VOD, maybe um, maybe you're catching this uh, after the next Mini Comic Awards. Tell me who won. Um, but uh, the uh, our show this year is part of the Cartoonist Cooperative, uh, and uh, you know we're an amazing organization that I'm so glad to be spearheading uh, that is helping to bring car uh, cartoonists together to fight for better living wages, to fight for more sustainable working conditions, and to improve and protect the labor rights of comic workers worldwide. Um, you know, our organization is over 700 members strong after a year now, giving access to uh, career development resources. We've got uh, feedback and assistance, uh, discounts for different printers, and all and all that stuff. Um, uh, we're coming up on we're coming up on 800 members now uh, after after a year, and I'm so so excited to uh, be part of this movement that is helping to advance to to be able to. Uh, create uh better livelihoods for cartoonists everywhere to make to make making comics as a career possible um so would highly recommend if you're uh if you're seeing this and uh maybe you're not already a member uh would sincerely appreciate uh you uh hang out becoming a member uh if you if you don't make comics but want to support you can uh join us as a volunteer and help the and help our members to continue doing the awesome work that they're doing 
and help the organization, it really it really means a lot. Uh, so we we sincerely appreciate it. Uh, I think we uh, have a few we have a few minutes here. Uh, we might take uh, a quick intermission uh, and uh, see if we can see if we can get any of our winners on here who want to say a few words. Uh, just uh, get get the get the last bit of our show ready, um, and uh, and we'll be back in just a few minutes.
And we're back. Uh, they, thank you so much again. So glad to have folks here. Uh, once again, if you're just tuning in, my name is Joan Zaha Dark. I am the uh, part of the steering committee for uh, the Curtis Cooperative and your Master of Ceremonies for this evening. Uh, we're uh, we have just a category left here, but we're gonna. Uh, take a little opportunity to welcome some of our winners on for folks that are uh, able to make it to accept their awards and just kind of say a little bit about their comics if they can um, uh, for anyone that wants, wants to pop on and uh, as we're as we're going through the show here um, uh, as a as a reminder we have uh, we just heard from uh, folks talking about our uh, previous winners, uh, Fancies by Alex Cara, uh, Marrow, aka Rodney's Law by Sloan Hong, Cross Signals by Naren Stritch, and Bottoms Up by Barbara Benyas. Uh, and I believe we have uh, our our winner uh, for, for Sci-Fi here to accept their award if they would like. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi, um, I'm Sloan Hong. Um, I would like to thank, well, everyone, well, for people who voted for me, and um, thank you very much for choosing me as the winner for the sci-fi category. Um, a massive thanks goes out to um, Hana Chatani for helping um, helping me get through the period in which I was making Marrow because that was um the production of it was kind of a nightmare um at the end of the comic you will see that um my my little section about how it was um just drawn page by page and I very quickly learned exactly why thumbnail comic thumbnails are a thing <laughs> but um yeah Thank you so much to everyone, and um, tell us what you're working on next, too. I, I'm i working on another comic for the Shortbox Comics Festival, which um, is not entirely sure what the story is specifically going to be, but it's going to be hyper-violence and extremely gay, and I hope you guys like gore. <laughs> More gore. I popped in More the gore. speaking my language. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i don't think i have much else to say but um thank you again to everyone this is insane because as a new zealand artist it's not very often that we get to take part in these kind of things let alone get this kind of recognition you know it's actually funny you say that i think alex Carr is also from new zealand so we have two new zealand winners well that's the thing it's um, New Zealand's comic, um, well, I guess, well, that's the thing. I can't say New Zealand's comics community because we don't really have a community. We don't have, really have an industry. We're just very isolated people who kind of happen to know each other simply because we come across each other's work sometimes. Like, the only reason that um, Alex Carr and I know each other is because of an event called Chromacon, which is like a indie arts festival that used to happen every two years in New Zealand. And it was like the only thing that was anything remotely like Mocha or like TCAF or stuff like that. Uh -huh. But um, that's been on hiatus since um, COVID started. So we haven't mm -hmm. had that for about four years. And as a result, like New Zealand's um, indie arts community has kind of like not splintered, but we've been a lot more isolated since then. And like you can really feel it in the community but like yeah as a result like we struggle to keep up with each other because we don't really periodically see each other very often and new zealand's public transport is terrible it costs like the price of i don't know how to explain it but getting from city to city is really expensive and really difficult and yeah basically it's not a great place to be a creative but here we are at the mini comics festival and we both somehow won and it is a very big point of pride for us <laughs> yeah y'all are making amazing work over there mm -hmm. thank you very much <laughs> new zealand sweep new zealand sweep <laughs> baby new zealand sweep <laughs> uh, uh, anyway yeah i've said enough i think well thank you for coming on thank, thank you very you much so much <laughs> uh, 
Uh, truly, truly so wonderful. Uh, housing segregation is an issue in everything. Um, uh, this is this is the world we live in. Um, thank you so much, Sloan, for being here. Um, uh, and I think uh, as we're given a second for uh, if if folks do want to come on and accept their awards, uh, I I'd love to open it up to our uh, our judges panel here to like talk a little bit more about. Uh, their process and how it was to go through all the all these amazing comics uh, and uh, you know uh, talk just like gush about all of the amazing stuff that you, that you got to work through. Uh, gosh, how many were there? It was like three fifty or something, right? It was almost four hundred. It, it was, was almost four hundred. I think it was three fifty six. If I want to be yeah, specific. that sounds that sounds right. Um, for me, it was homework every day, reading 20 in a different category, so I wouldn't get sick of anything. Um, because I think Autobio had the most, and if I had to read like 100 Autobio comics in a row, I think I would lose my mind. Um, but there, it was a good time, like being reminded like how different comics can be. As I've gotten older, I don't sit down to read a lot of comics anymore. I used to be like the big web comic guy. I had like a whole folder of like 20 that I would check every day. But as I've gotten busier, I don't read as many. So it was really refreshing to go back and be like, this is what we're doing. We like, we are all making so much art, so much amazing stuff that I've been missing out on. And it was nice to just have an excuse to do it. Finally. So far behind. For sure. I, yeah. Like every comic was published this year, which is last year. stunning you know like oh my god i didn't like i thought that short box comics fair was so many titles and it turned out to you know be a small percentage of really all the stuff that we read so yeah i just love that the community is so active and that artists really are just like taking these worlds into their own hands and not waiting for permission to tell their stories but just getting it out there so um it's just so cool to see and you know, just the variety of subject matter, style, and what people are doing with the medium. They're really pushing it forward in a way that um, I think you don't see as much in traditional comics, like kind of the underground stuff. Yeah. And yeah, like it's hard to kind of get access to some of that stuff. Just, you know, if you go to a regular bookstore, you're not going to see most of this stuff. But it was really cool to kind of get to see how much people are doing in this genre and the community and um just how much love there is for comics like i think that's so cool yeah i mean i'm gonna piggyback both of those because I've, I've been doing that this whole award show uh because they're brilliant um but i truly as somebody and i'm sure everyone has this experience when you're pitching and working on comics uh, you stop reading comics because you're working on comics so you don't want to read them <laughs> because you're working on them. Um, yeah. And I like, you know, as folks, I'm sure we've all been through the grind. I think that mainstream comics does end to have to conform a little bit. That's always the, the nature of making something that is intentionally, the goal is to be mainstream and consumable. And so you get used to reading like really rigid structures in comics in traditional. They're still wonderful, but they're definitely following like rules and patterns and, um, systems that allow them to work and so this experience of reading like sitting down and having to read around 300 incredibly ranged incredibly unique styles of storytelling that are all like 100 percent diverse just from the nominees that we were talking about they're all very different comics leading up to uh every category was such a huge deal for me just because i like i haven't read <laughs> i felt like shocked about how little i read or i've clearly just been reading like specifically Korean web comics, which became, which is even more rigid in structure. So it was such a, an amazing experience. And um, getting to hear also, I just want to shout out, like talking to Taylor and Victoria and hearing their own opinions on like why they liked these certain comics or why certain things were really interesting to them or brought something new to them. You know, I'm only on the writing side and getting to hear like the nature of like the artistry behind it and the choices and the paneling was really exceptional. It was a great experience. So. Uh, this is very wonderful. Yeah. Love, love to hear it. Love to hear it. I think uh, 
I think Victoria is is kind of touching on a very good point that that is like so so necessary to hear too that like you know everyone turn, tunes in for the short box comics fair and everyone tunes in for like you know seeing all the amazing work there and there really is so much other work out there and you know things are uh things are hard because we are still in a pandemic uh and uh dealing with uh like going to shows and getting people's mini comics like in person is not nearly as accessible as it used to be um so it's very nice to see so much amazing uh amazing art that people are making in the in these uh in these nice little packages it's just it's really wonderful Uh, just so much love all around. Just I I could I could go on, um, but uh, yeah. Uh, of course, thank of course, thank you so much again for everyone uh, who, all of y'all who went through all these amazing submissions. Um, uh, as we're kind of as we're kind of going into the tail end here, I want to give one more shout out to uh, all of our donors here who made the. Uh, the prize pool that we're giving out tonight uh, for 3700 possible uh, for our winners. Thank you so much. That, you know, includes other cartoonists, includes uh, small publications, you know, at like uh, just people in community who want to see comics do well, right? And so that's just very wonderful to see. Uh, you can see all those names scrolling by here. Uh, and I think with that, uh, I have stalled for enough of your time. So I'm going to uh, let Victoria close us out here with uh, introducing uh, our nominees for fantasy. All right. So fantasy, again, is another genre that's close to my heart. I really think that there's like no bad genres, horror, sci-fi. I, I love all of it. And um, the, the entries for fantasy, I think we had the fewest, but we definitely had a lot of really strong contenders. Uh, and every nominee here was just somebody that we absolutely adored. So without further ado, uh, fantasy. Unicorn Hunted by Ian Simmons. The Bird Daughters by Madeline McGrain. Be Wary the River by Kit Fraser. The Jester by Marcel Chodre Shorigen? Sorry. Shorgian. Sorry. Um, and the winner is... Bird Daughters by Madeline McGrain. Um, this comic was just, again, skillfully made. The story was weird but in a way that reminded me of the best fantasies and the best fairy tales it was dark and spooky but the artwork just was so reminiscent of um the simplicity of what made my favorite storybooks and uh it reminded me of being read a really dark fairy tale by my parents as a child and i don't know if any of you guys were also kind of weird goth kids but um the darker it was the better and the way that the story unfolds it's unexpected but at the same time just it feels like such a natural conclusion that um it, it was just stunning and it was one of one of my favorites for sure from this category does any other judge want to say something And you got there first. <laughs> uh, I I I just want to echo everything that Victoria said. I was completely enthralled with kind of the folklore energy from it. Like I feel like this could have been an oral tale passed down and like is now being inscribed in beautiful art. And I just genuinely felt like this is something that you can probably read with any mindset going in, which I think is very fun. Um, and you'll leave with the mindset that the story wants you to, which is, you know, a little dark, but I, I, 
dark aside to me this also had the romanticism in the art and i just was so enthralled by it uh definitely a well-deserved win like beautiful story yeah i have always loved madeline brain's inking in particular and i think it just suits this story so well like fairy tale is a very difficult genre to get where it doesn't feel like you're copying another kind of fairy tale like uh, an original fairy tale is hard to do in the modern era and I think like really good job here doing that uh, I don't know how to explain it it just it feels like something that could have been an adaptation of something from centuries ago but it's original and it's new and it's great like it, it just fits right into the canon is one thing I'm trying to say Well said. Well, well said. Uh, once again, congratulations to Madeline McGrain for that win. Uh, so glad to see it. Uh, and congratulations to all of our uh, amazing winners and nominees tonight. Um, everyone that was selected for uh, this short list here is absolutely outstanding uh in in their own different way um they're you know with so many different submissions and so much to go through you know there it's uh everyone everyone on this list is absolutely outstanding and i can't encourage y'all enough to go out and uh for the uh for the comics that are that are there if you can if you can buy the comic itself from the artist uh from uh, they're all linked on our little mini comic page. Uh, we'd love to we'd love to see that. If uh, if they're not available, if they're sold out, buy something else from that artist. Uh, make sure that you support their work. Um, this is you know uh, for for all of our nominees here. They all deserve to be supported so so much, uh, and we. Uh, uh, hopefully we've given you all uh, a lot more reading to do after today. Uh, not too much, because there are still many comics, but but a little bit more. Um, so, uh, uh, once again, uh, congratulations to uh, all of our nominees, uh, everyone on our, on our short list uh, here as we're closing out. Uh, Thank you so much to everyone who's tuning in. Thank you so much to everyone who's catching the VOD, who's catching this after. Um, again, if you're, uh, maybe maybe you're catching this a few days after, maybe you're catching this a year after. Um, hopefully this is, uh, you're seeing this after the next Minicom Awards show. How did, did, did it go better than this one? Did it, did it go worse? Uh, let me know. Uh, and we're so excited uh to to do this again for y'all uh and uh yeah take care everybody comics forever bye bye guys i'm gonna keep waving i'm gonna keep waving until the show cuts off <laughs>